So this is radioactive, it is highly fluorescent, and it is volcanic. And what this is, is highlight opal. Now, highlight opal is a form of opal that is characterized by its high water content and glass-like transparency. Chemically, it is amorphous, and what that means is that it has no crystalline structure. And this is what gives it that almost liquid-like appearance. Unlike other opals, highlight opal is often colorless and forms in botryoidal or like globular masses, like what you can see here. And it sort of resembles tiny masses of bubbles or drops. Now the most well-known localities for this kind of super fluorescent highlight are going to be Namibia on the west coast of Africa and Mexico, with this particular material coming from the area around San Luis Potosi in Mexico. Now that's not to say that highlight doesn't come from other regions, it's just not going to be the super fluorescent type. So what I have here is actually a piece of highlight from my home state of Queensland in Australia. And as you can see, there is no fluorescence coming out of this stone, especially when you compare it to the uh, Mexican material, you can see super fluorescent from the Mexican deposit and nothing from the Queensland deposit. Now the fluorescence in highlight is primarily due to trace amounts of uranium trapped within the actual structure of the stone. Now with something like highlight opal uh, in this kind of fluorescence that we can see here, there's like really intense fluorescence. Now this is probably going to have somewhere in the region of like a few hundred parts per million of uranium uh, in the lower grade stuff like you can sort of see here this is still giving a bit of a glow but it's not quite the same as like the, the really high grade stuff so you can see the difference in the two stones. Now something like this is probably going to have more like in the range of say tens of parts per million or even less than tens of parts per million of uranium compared to something like this which might have a few hundred parts per million. Okay, so now we're going to go from the prepping station to the fastening machine. Let's have a look. Okay, so I've got the highlight. I'm at my VJ fastening machine here. Very cool Australian made one. And first thing I'm going to do is probably get the maybe 180 grit. Just a quick word on safety. So because this is a slightly radioactive substance, we're not talking anything too serious, so we can handle it as I mentioned, uh, but we have to worry about the dust. So I'm going to be cutting with a lot of water, and what this will do is it will trap the dust in the water rather than being floating around in the air, so it'd be less to inhale, and all that will just go through the machine and pass out into the sink underneath. The other thing that I'll do, just in case there is some dust in the air, is I have a N95 mask. So this is going to hopefully trap most of the dust that doesn't get trapped into the water. And at the very end, I'll make sure everything is nicely cleaned up and I'll wipe it all up with a wet sponge, just so I'm not pushing that dust up into the air and we're getting rid of any potentially uranium-containing dust. Okay, so now the piece is preformed. So I haven't changed as much. You can see it's still got that same kind of like diamond sort of shape. However, what I have done is I've trimmed up the sides a little bit and you can see a nice flat surface on there. And I'll be able to choose from my top sticks and pick out the right size one, which is probably going to be this one here. And yeah, so from this I'll be able to attach that onto that nice flat surface there now and we can start cutting once it has dried. Okay now, so I put the dopstick into my VJ fastening machine here. And the reason I've done that is so that I can line up my 96 mark on my index here. 
and basically that will allow me to uh, make sure I get my diagram correct. Okay, so now the glue has had time to dry and as you can see here, it's all nice and flat on there and we've got the right kind of shape going on. I'm not going to preform it any more than that. Pop it back into the machine. Tighten it up. And we can get faceting. So I'm actually going to be using Justin K. Prim's book, The Secret Teachings of Gem Cutting. So I'm going to be using his square step cut design for low RI stones. And because I want to do more of a sort of diamond shape, I've actually added my own little numbers here. So where they would normally cut at these specific index gear angles, I'm actually just modifying a little bit so I can get one straight side there, straight side there, straight side there, and a straight side there, rather than getting a square. Okay, so we've got the basic outline done now as set to the index wheel. However, I can see there's a little kind of uh, cavity, little dent coming in here. So this is going to have to come in a little bit that way. And there's also, as you can see here, a big inclusion on the side. So we'll try and move that one and I'll have to make it a bit shorter and get rid of that corner there. But otherwise, we're looking good. Okay, so the cutting of the pavilion is finished. We'll move on to the pre-polishing and polishing next. I think it's looking pretty good. What do you reckon? Okay, so the pre-polishing is done. I think uh, we're looking pretty good. Got most of the inclusions out. A little bit on the side there, but we're about to get on to the uh, actual polishing stage now. Hopefully it turns out well. Right, so for the polish, we're gonna use some diamond powder. This is 50,000 grit diamond powder. So it's going to give it a good polish and I think for opal, not going to go like this, this should be more than enough for the polish. Let me make a bit of a slurry.
Okay, so the pavilion of the stone, which is the base of the stone, is now fully cut and polished. I've got all three rows of facets there. There's some interesting textures forming on the facets as well, which is kind of cool. So we'll have a look at that at the end. Otherwise, I think they're looking pretty good. And yeah, all you have to do now is unscrew this and take it off to the dopping station and redop it on the other side. Okay, so the next part is going to be redopping it so we can cut the top of the stone. I've got my little transfer jig here and I've pulled out the right size and right shape. This is kind of a universal top stick with a little round bit on the end here. And yeah, we'll get it redopped and start cutting the table. Okay, so the stone is now redopped on the other side, and we are ready to start cutting the crown. Okay, so we are now finished. Ground is cut, pavilion is cut. All I gotta do is take it off the top stick and clean it up, and we will have one finished stone. Okay, and there we have it, the finished radioactive super fluorescent volcanic highlight opal. It was a bit interesting cutting this piece, it did end up quite a lot smaller than I had hoped. It actually ended up only a little bit over four and a half carats. Uh, there were some inclusions there that just kept kind of coming, and unfortunately it does mean that, yeah, I did have to take off quite a lot of weight from the piece. Uh, there is still a little uh, open inclusion on the top, uh, and a couple little bits going on around it. But I think it still turned out pretty well. 
What is actually really cool though is if you look closely and you actually look at the surface you can actually see some of the original like flow texture of the opal, kind of like a, a glassy sort of swirly sort of pattern which is, which is pretty cool and I may have been able to get it out with the cutting but I actually kind of liked it. I mean if I'd gone to maybe 100,000 grit rather than 50 uh, but I think it actually kind of represents the actual formation of the stone and you can only see it under high magnification so I'm actually pretty happy with this. Would be nice if it was a bit larger but I think we've done alright. What do you guys think?